The last type of problem that we're going to look at here in Lesson 4.6 is to state what additional information is needed to prove that the triangles are congruent by HL. Notice that in this first set of triangles here, we do have two right triangles. We know that the other triangle is also a right triangle because that right angle forms a vertical angle and vertical angles are congruent. So if this one's 90 degrees, so is this one. You can also see that these two sides are marked the same. And that side, since it's the longest side and it's across from the 90 degree angle, that's the hypotenuse. So if we're gonna try to show that these two triangles are congruent by HL, we just need a pair of congruent legs. There's a lot of different options here. Just as long as you have a leg of one triangle that's marked the same as the leg of another triangle, we know that the triangles would be congruent by HL. So I could pick either of the legs. In this first triangle, I'm gonna pick leg X n. Well, that leg kind of looks like it's the same length as this leg here, but remember a diagram, we don't know if something's the same unless it's marked the same. So honestly, you could pick either. You could do xn and mn, or you could do xn with ln. I'm going to do ln just because, you know, they do kind of look the same in the picture. So that one probably makes the most sense. Notice the order that I put the letters. Xn, see how x is not the 90 degree angle and n is the 90 degree angle? When we write the pieces, we want to write them so corresponding parts are in the same spot. So x to n, n is my 90. Well, in the other triangle, it's l to n. Again, n is the 90 degree angle. So the right angles are in the same spot in my statement. Now, technically, of course, that is a segment, so I should have the segment symbol over it. But when you type it into your interactive notebook, you can just type the capital letters, XN congruent to LN. Now, there would be another option here. Well, there's several more options, but I could have chosen the other leg too. You don't need to write that in your interactive notebook, just make note of it. You could have picked like WN is congruent to MN. That would have worked as well. There's two different options. We could even have picked some that don't necessarily look the same in the diagram. So I could have also picked like XN, this leg here, that could be the same as this leg here, MN. There are a lot of different options. You just need to type one of those into your interactive notebook. Here's another one similar to the last problem. We again have two right triangles, this middle one here, for example, three, and we already have a pair of hypotenuses that are congruent. So you just need to pick a pair of legs. Again, there's a lot of different options. You just need to pick one of them. I'm going to pick the longer leg and I'm just gonna go off of looks here. So leg CB in my first triangle matches with this leg in the other triangle. Now try to name the letters in the same order. Okay, when you do your multiple choice questions on your Schoology homework, they're gonna be in the same order like that. See how C is unmarked and that B is the 90 angle? Well, I want the 90 angle to be second in my other name too. So I could go CB and UV because V is the 90 degree angle. Now it would have been fine if I had gone in the other order too, if I had called the first one BC, then I would call the second one VU. Just as long as the corresponding parts are in the same position. You could also match up the short legs too. DB congruent to TV would also be a fine way to show they're congruent by HL. On our final pairing here of triangles, we once again have two right triangles. Notice how this makes a line here. We have a linear pair, okay? And in a linear pair, the two angles have to add up to 180 degrees. Well, I know if this one's 90 degrees and it has to add to 180, this one here must also be 90 degrees. So we do have two right triangles and they're overlapping to share a leg. So we have an L this time. Well, now for the hypotenuse, there's only one option. We need the hypotenuse which is the side across from the 90. So we need those two sides that I marked with two tick marks to line up. That means side HQ needs to be congruent to side RQ. 
Again, I named them in the same order. If you look at your two triangles and try to match up your corresponding parts, you can see that H to Q, see how H to Q, I'm going across the two line, but then Q joins up with the shared leg? H to Q, well, I want to go for across the two and join up with the shared leg. That's R to Q. So the hypotenuse would be HQ is congruent to RQ. When you type that in your interactive notebook, the capital letters are fine. You don't need the segment symbol. That'll be there, though, when you do your multiple choice questions for your Schoology homework. That's it for lesson 4.6. We now know all five ways to prove that triangles are congruent. And you are ready to go to Schoology and complete your 4.6 homework assignment. Thanks for watching. Bye.